All right, so another example here involving uh, the order of operations with some fractions. And uh, part B here, I think this one might actually be a bit of a beast. Um, I think this one, we'll see what happens. Uh, could be a, a long problem, but again, you know, sometimes you have to deal with numbers that are not so friendly. So we've got 4 minus the fraction uh, 7 ninths minus 2 thirds times 2 all over 1 eighth times 4 sevenths squared. All righty. Well, again, in terms of the order of operations, you know, I see addition and subtraction, but the things to me that stick out the most are the multiplication and also the exponents. And remember that uh, exponents happen first. So that'll be the first thing we'll have to do. So we've got 4 minus 7 ninths minus 2 thirds. I'm going to write 2 as, again, simply 2 over 1 all over 1 eighth times, well, I'm going to go ahead and square this. This would be 4 times 4, which would be 16. And then we have 7 uh, times 7, which would be 49. All right, so let's see here. Um, the next thing I see now, I think, well, I've got rid of my exponents by squaring. So now I'm going to do the multiplication. So I'm going to do this step here. I'm going to multiply those two digits. And then I'm going to multiply those two digits as well. All right, so this will be 4 minus, okay, so we have 7 ninths. Again, I kind of think we have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. 2 times 2 is 4 over 3. Now, in the denominator, okay, we could multiply, you know, 1 times 16 is 16, and then do 8 times 49. Now, it's a yuck. You know, it's kind of a big number. Um, Probably not the worst in the world, but, you know, again, to me it's much easier to reduce, though. I see 16 over 8, and again, we can simplify things. So 16 over 8 is simply going to leave us with 2 over 1, and now we can just multiply those digits. So we have 1 times 2, which is 2, over 1 times uh, 49, which will be 49. So, all right, you know, that to me at least is a, a little bit better, it saves me some effort. So again... Use this to your advantage. You know, simplify before you multiply. It'll be save you some work. All right. So now I think what I'm going to do on my next step is well, I see uh, now I'm just basically down to subtract a lot of subtraction and some division. Um, I'm going to do the subtraction in the numerator first. Okay. Um, you know, you could break this fraction up. You could do seven over nine over that, and then minus, and you'd have to worry about parentheses and making sure all your positives and negatives are correct. So you could certainly do it that way. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just simplify this numerator first. So all I'm looking at, again, is the numerator of my fraction. So I've got 7 over 9 minus 4 over 3. Well, I guess I could have a common denominator of 9 by multiplying my fraction that involves the 4 over 3 by 3 over 3. All right, so we've got 7 over 9 minus, let's see, 4 times 3 would be 12 all over 9. And again, this is over 2 over 49. I think we're getting a little bit closer here. Okay, so now we've got 4 minus, let's see, there's our 2 over 49 in the denominator. In the numerator, notice we would have our common denominator of 9. Let's see, 7 minus 12, that would leave us with negative 5. All right, so let's, let's clean this up a little bit. So now I think, aha, I'm getting close. I've got 4 minus some fraction divided by some fraction. Well, to do this... We can simply do, we can rewrite our division as multiplication. So we have negative 5 ninths. We have to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, 49 over 2. And now I think, okay, so close. So first I think, you know, can I cancel anything like we did a second ago? And in this case, I don't think we can. Um, there's no common factors to, to reduce. Let's see, the denominator is easy. 9 times 2 is 18. Let's see, 5 times 
if, it, if this was a 50, 5 times 50 would be 250, so we're kind of using this trick of estimating. 5 times uh, 50 would be 250, but there's one multiple less, so instead of 250, I think we should get 245. And again, let's not forget that it's negative. All right, you can check my arithmetic there. I, or another way to think about it, 5 times 40, it would be 20. 5 times 9 is 45. Again, that gives us negative 245. All right, so now we've got, we've got a negative. So we've got 4 minus a negative number. That's the same thing as 4 plus the number. And I'm going to write 4 simply as 4 over 1. So then we have 245 over 18. Almost there. We're trying to uh, write this as a single fraction. Well, to get common denominators, I could multiply top and bottom of my uh, first fraction. I can multiply top and bottom by 18. So let's see, we definitely get 18 in the bottom. 4 times 18. Okay, so again, we could round. Uh, I'm going to do 4 times 10, which is 40. 4 times 8, which is 32. Uh, 40 and 32 will leave us with 72. Plus 245 over 18. Add these up. So let's see. Um, certainly over 18. Um, if we add the, the ones digits, 2 and 5 would be 7. Then we would basically have 70 and 240, which I believe would leave us with 317. That looks okay to me. So it says we're left with 317 over 18. Um, now the question to me is, does this reduce? Um, does this reduce? Uh, that's a good question. Um, certainly we can make it into a mixed number, and maybe that's a good way to, to see if it will reduce. Because, um, you know, I'm thinking 317, is that a prime number? Is it not a prime number? Um, you know, there's different ways we can, we can think about that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just make it a mixed number here. So we have 317 over, excuse me, divided by 18. So 18 will go into 31 once. So 1 times 18 is 18. Let's see, 31 minus 18 would be 13. We can drop the 7 down. Yuck, so how many times does 18 go into 137? Well, I'm going to round this to about 20. This is pretty close to 140. 20 would go into 140, I guess, 7 times. 2 would go into 14 about 7 times. So I'm thinking somewhere around 6 or 7. Um, let's see. So let's do 18 times 7. What does that give us? So 7 times 8 is 56. We'll carry the 5. That'll give us 12. That looks like uh, that would be the way to go. So it looks like 18 will go into 137 7 times without going over. So 7 times 18 is 126. If we subtract, we would be left with 11. Um, so we can write this as a mixed number. We can write 317 over 18 as the mixed number, well, 17, and then the remainder would be 11 eighteenths. So, all right, we've now got it reduced as a mixed number, um, and that would now be uh, our final answer. So, all right, I uh, hope that makes some sense. Again, a lot of steps. There's a ton of arithmetic um, you know, uh, it, it seems like, you know, uh, you know, it seems like these problems should be easier somehow, right? There's just, but there's so many little steps. And again, um, don't get discouraged if you do make a little mistake. Jeez, it's so easy to do. Um, so many signs and just multiplication and things, I think, too, that we have a tendency. It would be easy to go through this pretty quickly, right? After all, you're just adding and subtracting. Um, um, sometimes that would be my attitude. But definitely slow down and take your time. Because, again, if you kind of miss just one little, you know, one little bit of arithmetic, it's all kind of, uh, well, it's all kind of wrong. So, all right, again, I hope this example makes some sense.